Tonight, we're delighted to be presenting the UK premiere of I Am Michael and to be welcoming to BFI South Bank its director, Justin <laughs> Kelly. This is Justin's first feature film as director and the festival is proud to have presented one of his earlier short films, Debris, at the, 20, uh, at the 2007 festival. BFI Flair plays an important role in launching new LGBT talent and introducing them to audiences in the UK and indeed to our film industry, seeding future collaborations and opportunities. We are so excited in that context to be expanding on this role with two significant emerging talent initiatives this year. The first is our BFI Flair mentorship scheme in partnership with Creative Skillset, in which five LGBT identified filmmakers will have a senior figure from the film industry as a career development mentor, while they also take part in a great program of screenings and events through to the end of the BFI London Film Festival. We were genuinely impressed with the number of remarkable applicants that we received for this scheme, and our five selected filmmakers excelled within this inspiring group. Please join us in congratulating our 2015 recipients, Isla Bell Webb, Rochelle Constant, Aileen Ka Aileen Khan, Claire Kurovlovsky, and Scout Stewart. <laughs> they will have the benefit of guidance from our mentors, Swedish director Esther Martin Bergsman, whose new film Something Must Break screens here at the festival. Russell T. Davies, writer and producer of Queer as Folk, Doctor Who, and Cucumber, Banana, and Tofu. Mike Goodridge, CEO of Protagonist Pictures. Gavin Humphreys, a BAFTA-nominated producer. Hong Kao, the director of last year's BFI Flair opening film, Lilting, and our very own Ben Roberts, director of BFI Film Fund. And we're extremely grateful to all of them for committing their time to this scheme. In our second exciting new project, we reach global audiences for the first time ever with five short films selected for BFI Flair. With huge thanks to the vision of our partners at British Council and Owen Gemmell and Bryony Hansen in particular, these films will be available to view on the BFI Player for free for the duration of the festival in more than 70 countries worldwide. Recognising the fact that some people live and love freely while others do not, the British Council is running a global campaign next Wednesday, the 25th of March, to watch a film and tweet at hashtag five films for freedom. We are so proud that the films selected for our festival get to be part of this project and please help us create that social media storm. BFI Flair continues to flourish in no small part due to our valued partners. Returning as our principal sponsor for the ninth consecutive year, Accenture continues to prove its commitment to diversity and the LGBT community. And their gala this year is David Thorpe's witty and enlightening documentary, Do I Sound Gay? Big thanks are also due to the Department of Culture, Media and Sport for the funding that enables the BFI to deliver its cultural activity. Along with Accenture, sponsors the Mayfair Hotel and Renault show their love to both our festivals, Flair and the BFI London Film Festival in October, and they do a great job of hosting our visiting filmmakers in style. Much gratitude to our special screening sponsors, the Interbank LGBT Forum members, for their continued support of the festival, and their film this year is Match, starring the ever-wonderful Patrick Stewart. Thanks to our media partners, G3 and Attitude, along with our distribution partner, Impact, for helping us to expand the profile of the festival. Appreciation to our delicious in-kind sponsors of the technical, culinary and industry variety, Christy, Freshenet, Condator and Cook and Spotlight. And gushing, overflowing love to our other funding contributors and our community partners. I'd also like to ask you to join me in a huge shout out to those people who donate their time and their considerable energy to the success of this festival, our very wonderful volunteers.
Enormous thanks from me to our Deputy Head of Festivals, Tricia Tuttle, who deserves so much credit for those two new initiatives I just mentioned, and to Festivals producer, Emily Arnold, our marketing guru, Nairi Gillings, the extended festival team, all our colleagues at the BFI who support the development and delivery of this great event, and of course, our programming team, Jason Barker, our fabulous new recruit, Jay Bernard, Michael Blythe, Brian Robinson, and Emma Smart, who have created what is simply another kick-ass program. So now, please give it up for our uber-talented programming team, who will outline a few of the highlights of this year's festival. Now, films often change lives and are very often politically charged. Our centerpiece screening is a film which does both. Stories of Our Lives was made by a brilliant young collective. It was banned in its native Kenya. It's a powerful and timely look at the situation facing the LGBT community in a country where equality is a long way off. It's a film which deserves the widest possible audience and underlines just how important such films are. But there's lots to enjoy in the festival. Have a great festival and come back often. In light of the ongoing political and social elements of this festival, we have plenty of discussion and room for debate. This year, our archival strand takes the form of the Reading Between the Lines book club. We begin this Sunday with classics Orlando and the Colour Purple with poet and academic Sophie Mayer. And next Sunday, we'll be discussing Strangers on a Train and Fried Green Tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe with film lecturer Chris Lloyd. The discussion continues with our Media Tech event around Beautiful Things, a collection of LGBT archival classics from film and TV. And Lagna, the lesbian and gay news archives, will be presenting Chris Birch and Mike Jackson, activists and friends of some of the real life characters in the film Pride. Finally, for the parents among us, there are family fun day events this Sunday afternoon in the atrium with lots of activities for children, including an animation workshop. Extra to our programme, the chaps from Lucky Tooth Productions have made over 30 short films about trans people in a project supported by Channel 4 and All About Trans called My Generation. And we show, we'll be showing a selection of their films for free on a constant loop in the atrium in the Lucky Tooth booth. Um, we have some cracking parties at the Flair, and this year, after our IMAX screening of the Rocky Horror Picture Show, for which there are still tickets, we're holding our own Rocky Horror Party with DJs Sadie Lee and Jonathan Kemp. And my learned, learned colleague, Emma Smart, is giving a talk on Saturday called We Love Xena Warrior Princess, which <laughs> is followed by a warrior women-themed party hosted by the Amy Grime House. As with the Rocky Horror Party, dressing up is encouraged. I was intending to go as Martina Navratilova as a nod to our closing night film. And although I actually I have the wig, but I don't have any tennis gear, which is no surprise really. Um, so instead, I'm going to go as a Greenham Common peace protester and I hope to see you all there. Not that we want to think about it being over when we've only just begun, but we do have an amazing documentary for our closing night film this year. Malcolm Ingram's inspiring Out to Win charts the history of homosexuality in sport and really is not one to miss. We do still have tickets available for this and many other screenings, especially our matinees. So if you need a few hours away from work, then head on down here and we won't tell the boss. Also, don't forget about the standby queue for buying tickets on the day, even for sold out screenings. There's always a chance to pick up tickets and you never know, you might meet the person of your dreams standing in line next to you whilst you wait. In the varied landscapes of queer cinema, coming out stories are not hard to come across. Going in stories, however, are not quite so common. Therefore, it's a huge thrill for us to be opening this year's festival with a film that is doing something so different, challenging our expectations of what a gay film looks like and offering up new and provocative questions for us to consider. With this striking debut, director Justin Kelly has shown himself a thrilling new talent, handling the true life story of Michael Glatz, a former pioneering gay rights activist who shocked the community by denouncing his homosexuality and embarking on a new life as an anti-gay Christian pastor with style, sensitivity and a deeply inquisitive mind. Um, this really is a dream of an opening night film for us and I'm so delighted that Justin is here with us to say a few words before we start. So please join me in giving a huge flair welcome to Justin Kelly. Uh, it's such an honor to be the opening night film of BFI Flair. I still can't believe it. Uh, I'll just accept it. Um, <laughs> uh, I won't say too much because we're going to do a Q&A after, but uh, I just had such a phenomenal crew, uh, cast and crew involved in this film and 
we've been working on it for you know close to three years now, and I'm very excited to show it to everyone. So I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you after. <laughs>